Hello everyone, and welcome back to the tent. Minnesota today, primarily this morning. The wind will be accompanied by strong northerly wind flow, with frequent gusts of 25 to 35 miles per hour. The wind and snow will cause blowing snow and periods of low visibility, especially in open areas. The snowfall rates will become light by this afternoon, with some mix of rain and snow in the afternoon. A winter storm warning will continue across far northern Minnesota early this morning. I came up here yesterday afternoon. It was just uh, raining. And last night, I don't know, maybe around 9 o'clock or so, it started changing over to snow. And I think by the time it gets done around noon today, we'll probably have 4 or 5 inches on the ground. Zachary's coming up tomorrow. Uh, we have some deer stand stuff to take care of. And just a few things to get done before next weekend's Minnesota deer hunting opener. Well, I was just sitting here doing comments on uh, the YouTube channel. And what do you do before when you're waiting for it to get light out? And the power went out. <laughs> They've been warning of it on the radio that the power could go up because of this storm. Luckily, the tent is set up to be off grid also. Pretty much as bright in here now as it is when the electric lights are on. I always like the sound of those gas lanterns. Luckily for me, the laptop runs on battery and so does my Wi-Fi hotspot. So I can still do videos sitting here in my long johns. This lantern right here runs on the one pound cylinders. That one up there I have hooked up to a 20 pound cylinder. And that 20 pound cylinder is the one on the left. The one on the right, that one runs the oven and the cooktop. The lantern in here, that runs on the one pound cylinders. And I have an extra 20 pound cylinder back here and I've got a whole bunch of the one pounders. So. I don't care if the power doesn't come on the whole time I'm up here. I don't have any lanterns out here in the outhouse, but if the power does go out like this, and I needed them going if there's a bunch of people up here and it's night, I do have the candles. I'm sure the power will come on pretty soon, but just for instances like this is why I have this whole bin full of magazines just for something to do when you don't have the internet. Looking at this here, I'm uh, we've got a solid six inches of snow on the ground here and it's still snowing out pretty hard. Look at how beautiful that is. I just talked to Melissa on her 25 minute ride to work. The truck's been running out there. I have to shut off all the lights so you'd save gas. Now it's not like I usually do and just leave them on. I'm going to sweep off the truck a little bit. Let's go drive the loop. It's got to look just beautiful going down those roads. We have a tree down across the road there.
I can see this is gonna take a while. That's the spot right there that remember last time I was up here, I cleared that so I could park down here by my far stand and I have more of those uh, reflective tacks on those trees, but you can see how that snow just hangs on them and covers them up. closest radio station to the tent is about 50 or 60 miles away and uh, I was listening to it this morning and then the power went out and now I have it on in my truck and the power or the radio station is not on so power must be dead in this whole northeast area of Minnesota. I've just been cutting tree after tree after tree. I haven't been filming all of it, but this one I just walked up to. This one has to be done by chainsaw. This is a big tree that snapped right off. Too big anyway for my handsaw. Well, that ate up almost a half hour of time. That was not a dead tree. That was a live tree that snapped off. It's funny, when I was driving up here, I was about 20 minutes into my trip and they had a windstorm up here last week. And my dad called me and he said, did you throw in your chainsaw? And I says, no, I'm not gonna need the chainsaw. And then I started thinking, well, it would really suck if I come up here and I couldn't get in on the road. So I turned around, went back to 20 minutes, got my chainsaw and threw it in the back of my truck. Pretty glad that I did. All right, well, we made it past this part, but now I have to loop all the way around and come at it from the other way, see if anything is down over there. They haven't even plowed the tire roads yet. chainsaw on that one too. Oh, I got the 
size of that one. I've been out doing this for almost two hours now. I'm coming up the tent driveway. This is the second tree I have to cut in the tent driveway, and we already drove through here. <laughs> Somewhere along that trip, my windshield cracked all the way across. Well, I made it back to the tent. Power is still not on. I am soaked from the crotch down. My arms are soaked. I'm going to get out of these clothes and put on some dry ones. keep my camera batteries charged up as well as my cell phone which I mean I can do all of it in my truck but it's nice ones right here This battery pack here Melissa bought me for Christmas last year or I don't know a couple years ago whenever and uh, this thing works awesome. You can charge your phone. It lasts a real long time, so I'm going to make sure this is charged up too. I've had this pot of water on here all morning trying to get some humidity in the tent. It's awfully dry in here. But I don't have a microwave and I want to heat up. I bought some pre made chicken yesterday. That's what I had for supper because it was too late. I didn't want to cook. So I could use my other oven, but I might as well just let this heat up and use this for my microwave and heat that chicken up. Well, just before I came up here, I finished um, a batch of jerky, and I've been wanting to make a trail mix for years that I can put some jerky in there also, just to try it. And I brought everything up, so I'm actually going to do a batch and see, see if the jerky adds to it or not. Well, I have one cup of jerky cut up, and uh, I'm, I'll wait till after lunch to do the rest, but it should be kind of fun to try.
Well, it's 12.58 and the power just popped back on. Let's go drive the loop one more time and see if they plowed the uh, the main road. Oh, look at all the trees that are down again. Oh, maybe I don't want to do this and let somebody else. This is the driveway. I have to clear this, but the other road, let somebody else do it. Okay, those are out of there. I'm trying to do any of this without getting soaking wet again. Nobody else has driven on this uh, road here since I was here. I see another one up here that fell down. Halfway plowed. I went around that corner. See about 200 yards up farther there was uh, another big tree down and going this way in it's at least it's over two miles to the tent I'm not doing it right now <laughs> Do it in two wheel drive. <laughs> now that the power is back on, I'm going to recharge this battery. I mean, it's been a while since I actually charged this one. I know quite a few showers went through it. That's not too bad, it's still just below 75%. All right, now let's see if we can make any good trails. One cup of that. Two cups of peanuts. One cup of almonds. Two cups of raisins. One cup of cashews. I'm going to start with two cups of M&Ms. That's what the recipe said, but I added the almonds and the cashews and the turkey. Another half a cup of MMs on it. It's snowing like crazy again. Now let's just take a random handful out of here and see what we end up with.
I see we got a couple things of jerky in there, m and some raisins. Could almost be some more raisins in there. This trail mix here, it is really good. I eat a lot of different kinds of trail mix, and I am the type that likes the nuts and the chocolate. I don't want anything spicy in there. I don't want anything weird. Now, the raisins I don't mind because they get salty from the nuts. And I do like to have quite a bit of the chocolate in there mixed in with the nuts. Now with the jerky, you can't have it any bigger than the quarter inch piece because everything in a trail mix is easy to bite through. The M&M, the peanut, any nuts, whatever. The, the raisin is the stuff that has the most amount of friction when you're biting. The jerky has more. So if it's a bigger piece, you're trying to chew and all of a sudden you get this bigger piece of jerky. So you may... Uh, when I do it next time I'll make sure that nothing is bigger than a quarter inch. So what I'm going to do is I'll just eat this and the kids can eat it when they're up here too or whatever and I'll just kind of tweak it and see but for right now I'll write down what I did here and then after this bunch is done if I want to change it a little bit I can. These are all just recipes that we've tried up here. I think mainly Sarah and I, we used to do a lot of this kind of stuff. KFC biscuits, pancakes, Bannock. I think that one is McDonald's biscuits. And now we have trail mix. Well, I am officially bored, so I do have a pair of rain pants in my in my duffel bag so I think I'm gonna put them on in my boots and let's run over to that new area of Zachary's and let's pull that one trail camera bring it back here and see if anything was on it in the last week there still hasn't been anybody else that drove through here I'm never gonna make it one trip without a new tree being over the road This is why I didn't. I was planning on walking all the way back to that far stand. I don't even know if you'll be able to get back there with all the trees that would have fell over that uh, that trail, but you'd have been soaking wet. I mean, look at this mess. It sure is beautiful to look at, though. We've had a solid, a solid eight inches, maybe 10 inches that have fell here. I gotta try to remember. I think it was right by this curved tree here. There it is. We just came through here 10 minutes ago. Come on. <laughs> uh. When I walked over here, this is right on the other side of this tree. That's where I remember last week when I was up here, we went back to the tripod stand. This is right where you enter in. And uh, the deer like to follow that trail you walk in on. And look at this. Fresh deer tracks that come out of this side. And we went right in towards that tripod stand. Okay, let's try again. <laughs> I think I'm going to drive up here. It's just a little ways. And let's run in and switch the SD card out of that. The camera that's by Sarah's stand. If I don't do it now, I probably won't get it done. Well, the new SD card is in there, and I think it's all set up. I move the ice and stuff off the lens, see what happens. Well, 
this is the one that came from Zachary's area that he's interested in. Here I am when I'm leaving on the 20th. Twenty fourth at twelve forty two, and right after, so two deer came through that area. So they are running up that line, and then here I am today getting the camera. So not bad. So here is the one at Sarah's. There I am when I. Dropped off the camera. Well, oh, there's a doe, and there's a fawn, and a fawn. And it looks like, oh no, I don't know if that's eyes back there or if that's some of these eyes because Sarah used to have a stand farther back. So they're using both areas. I really would like to go out to that. Oh, that stand way the heck back there if there's time tomorrow and uh, pull that SD card. And that must be me taking it today, because you can see it's all full of ice. Okay, everyone, well, it's about 6 o'clock at night right now. I think I'm going to do a, a beef chuck roast on the barbecue here. I just do it over charcoal. I'm not real sure, but I think I'm going to end this video so that I can get it edited and get it uploaded. I just texted Zachary and asked, and I, he's at work, but even I told him I would totally understand if he didn't even come up. I was, you guys just seen it. I mean, some of the snow is very deep, so I don't know what we're going to get done tomorrow for any deer stands. We can check stuff out if he comes up, but um, if he doesn't want to come up, I totally understand. We could take care of it next week, Friday, when he comes up for deer hunting. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I'll start another video in the morning.